Beckman Leash podcast number 37. We are live. All right. I just sat down, Eric, because I was rushing around and I took Prince to a dog park right before this. Rodney Harrison, number 37. God, bro, you're doing so much better. I Come think on, you're I think you're looking these up. Maybe. Okay. I have no comment on that. All right. But I did know that one because he played for the Chargers. I know. So. Yeah. That, that's really good. Good job. All right. Keep going. I went to a dog park right before this. Here's the topic for the day. And then I'm going to get into something where for the first time ever from the last podcast, the most liked con comment was totally disagreeing with what I said and maybe what you said on the podcast. Probably because you're frequently wrong. <laughs> That's what uh, they thought about the last podcast. And But we also have a special guest here today. Oh, yeah. Prince is over there. Prince is hanging out watching us. Yeah. Yep. Um. <clears throat> So if you watch my videos from a year ago, two years ago, I'm fairly pro dog park. I am I believe in dogs getting energy out, getting fast twitch en energy out. I believe in socialization, but even less than that, I believe that dogs, especially when they're a year or so, two years, they need to get their energy out of their muscles and not everybody can go run with their dogs and sprint their dogs in the backyard, throwing the ball where they're sprinting does not do it. There's something about dogs playing with dogs that does magical things for dogs and dog parks are an easy way to do that. There are very few things I have flipped on my opinion on dog parks are those things. To be fair, you have been critical of dog parks as of late in the past. And, and you've also said to certain clients that they should not be bringing their dog. I've always said that, park. but, but I've been generally You're okay the with general them. population of dogs, not yeah. clients and, and generally okay with dog parks. Whereas other dog trainers, you'll see they're very anti. And I'm like, why are they so anti? Like mm -hmm. I took my dog, dog course. And, and I get it now. And I don't, uh, there's, I believe I have a pretty good understanding of the dog world and dog training five, 10 years ago. So there's not a flipping. This mm -hmm. is a flip. So I took, I took Prince to a dog park 10 minutes ago. I was at a dog park and I'm on my way there an hour ago or whatever. And I'm like, why am I so nervous about doing this? Because you don't want to be on the front page. Maybe it's because I'm on YouTube, Tribune. but not really. And I'm like, why do I not want to go here? Why am I nervous about it? Six months ago, maybe a year ago, I took Prince to a dog park. I've told this story on the podcast. And man, he walked in, not neutered, big dog, not going to take a lot of nonsense. He walked in, three dogs came up to him and were like, what's up? What's up, bro? You like that? You want to go? And I'm like, this is not a fun experience in any way. Now, that's on me. That's on me for not getting Prince neutered. Does that mean it's Prince's fault? No, he's just a normal dog and other dogs want to fight him. That's dogs, but that's on me. Prince getting a dose of his own medicine. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> and so, and there was Sorry, no bro. fights and he cruised around. He just wanted to smell and stuff, but like anything could have popped off at any time. So maybe I was thinking about that when I walked in this dog park, which is the local dog park here where you live. And I was just like nervous. So... I was thinking about this subject and what, how I'm going to talk about what I'm going to talk about on the podcast as I'm doing this dog park thing, uh, an hour ago. So I'm, I'm walking up to the dog park and I'm, I'm going, okay, wh why would I not go in this dog park today? So the number one reason I would not go, there were seven dogs in the dog park. The number one reason that I would not have gone into the dog park, which is something you have to always do is be ready to abort mission. When it comes to dog parks, you don't like the dynamics. You don't like the people. I mean, mainly it's the dogs, but the people and how they, you know, if you see, if you see like groups of people, which is how it's, it's, it is at this dog park, that means the dogs are also packed up a little bit. They come there every day at 10 o'clock. Well, they got their little crew. And then sometimes the new dog coming in three, four dogs won't like him. Isn't that a form of cowardice to, to abort the mission like that? No, absolutely okay. not. Just, just so here. Here is the reason I would not go into this dog park today. And some of you are, might not like this. Uh, it does not matter to me because it is the truth. And I'm going to explain it more in detail. I wouldn't go into that dog park today if there was a pit bull in it. There is one dog. If there was one, there is one dog in that dog park that could kill my dog. If it had a wide jaw, you would say no. If it had a big old cinder block head, <laughs> I would say no. Unless it was like, immediately like oh just the happiest greatest dog ever i'm not going in like there's 
There was one dog in there like, yeah, but me has barely a pit bull. His old, his wife's dog, uh, barely a pit bull. Half and half. Half and half. Um, there's one dog in there that's going to, that could kill my dog. That's a fact. No so other dog in that dog park could have killed my dog and pretty much no dog in the dog park except pit can kill your dog. Would you consider a Connie Corso a pit bull for this discussion? No, no. There are, listen, there, if there was a Tibetan Mastiff or, or an Anatolian or an Alibi or a Connie Corso, there is a dominance aspect to those dogs where they want to sometimes flip your dog and stand over your dog. Go through YouTube shorts or Instagram videos, and you're going to see this all the time. These certain dogs are all about dominance. Then there are dogs that use their mouth more than those dogs, and those are pets. And there is a thing when they change, and they will change sometimes, where they are they want to kill the other dog. And that is not a Cane Corso thing. What about Doug Argentinos? They're a little getting in a little more to that, but less so than pits, than gay bread pits. Borbles? Way less so. Way less Borbles are like, like, hey, I'll flip you. I'll stand over you. I'm not taking your nonsense, but they're not looking for that. And pits aren't either, but there is a high per, there is a higher percentage that are. It's the only dog in there that can kill my dog. My, guy, my dog could get in a fight or a dog could attack my dog. Many other dogs. They ain't going to kill my dog. There's one dog that can. And that's that. So is that because it just is going to bite him and not let go or what? That's why. And there's this thing in their head where they're like, they, 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 they're not letting go. They're not listening to the people around them. Some percentage, right? 5%, 2%, 10%. It's higher than any other breed. Could you train a dog to, or train a pit bull to, to let go? No. You if they want to hold on? No, like if you had it from birth. Well, I, your dog. if they want to fight, when they get into the fight mode, they will often not let go at a higher percentage than other dogs. Their brain goes, they have a different brain, the game bred ones, the, the ones who want to go. But don't they not want the smoke from Joel? Uh, they don't care about the smoke from Joel. Their brain is somewhere else. So you don't think you could raise a pit bull from birth? And get him, even if he was like game bread if, style, and you could to get him to actually when he's in listen that moment, you when you go, hey, when he's in that, when he, when he's, when he's latched on, it's tough. You could train him to let go, though, right? I could train him to be a good dog, but if if he goes to that place, what did Susan Milan say? Red zone or something? I don't know. If he goes to that place, they're they're it's like different. Serial killer level. They're right? different. They yeah, see red. They see red. It's different, and that's the only dog that could kill my dog in that deal. And that's a high cost to pay. So it would be like you taking your seven-year-old or me taking my seven-year-old to a park and you're like, a bunch of kids are running around and you're like, that kid's got a knife. Yeah. And, uh, then, you know, the park could be dangerous. A kid could bully your kid. A kid could hate your kid. A kid could kick your kid. Throw Santa. A lot of things can happen that hurt your kid. Your kid could be crying. All these things can happen. But there's a kid with a knife. Like that kid could actually do way more damage. Now, maybe that's a good kid, but maybe he likes to jump into fights between other kids. Maybe he's only going to use his knife if he's defending himself. There are all these, there's all these variables, but he still has a knife. So they have to, we have to be careful when they have a knife. You would be Any careful. Age. You'd be like, he's got a knife. Bro. Reminds me I don't know who Chappelle. I don't know who his parents about. are. It reminds me about that Dave Chappelle joke where that kid's in the project and he's like three. And Dave sees him. He's like, what are, you, what are you doing here, kid? He's like, I'm trying to make money. You never seen that? No. That's good. Never mind. Keep going. So when the kids got a knife, you would be a little more aware. You'd probably walk out. You would um, you'd realize that damage could be done. You'd realize that you don't know who those parents are. You realize you don't know that kid's history. All you know is he can do more damage than the other kids. And that is a fact. We could actually double down on this idea, right? Because... I was teasing you about being cowardice or whatever you want to call it. Oh, to not to, go. To not go. In. But there are places and things where you get that vibe, you get that feeling that something's off or something's wrong. Usually it's not like a charger game or oh, yeah, something yeah, yeah. big where there's a lot of people and you can sense that something big's going to happen or there's some fights or something like that. So you kind of like, should we be near this or watching this or should we just leave? Right? Yeah. And a lot of times there's, I mean, it's not normally that obvious, but... Usually crowded spaces, right? Yeah. 
And dog parks are crowded spaces with dogs. Yeah. So, okay. So you did not actually go in. Oh, no, I went in. So thank you. So I walked. This is what I tell everyone to do at dog parks. I walked Prince around. A couple dogs came up, said hi, hi through the fence. I'm assessing every situation. Oh, yeah, this dog's nice. And Prince is getting to know him through the fence. Then I went to the dog park, the, the second dog park that's connected the first, right? There's a fence in between. There's one golden in there playing ball. And I go in there and I let Prince run around and get his wiggles out and pee on everything. And then he poops. And then, uh, of course, after Prince poops, he always sprints, right? Can it can elicit a reaction to dogs? He sprints. He does this all in a, in another dog park with only one dog, not the eight dog dog park. Then is this the same one where you did the 100K view thing? Yes. Oh, okay. I yes. just want to know where you're at. That's where I was at. And then I walk, then Prince does his cruise around, gets his energy out a little bit. Then I go to the big dog park. He goes in, runs around. All the dogs are great. There's a Malamute in there. There's a Greyhound in there. There's a bunch of mixed breed dogs in there. Prince gets along with all of them. Um, and it was a great experience. But I, but I you never want to go back. I'm just, I'm rolling the dice with a non neutered dog like Prince. I'm rolling the dice a bit on a fight. I'm not rolling the dice on a death on a death because I'm not going in if there's a potential for a death. Oh, Joel, there's always potential for a death. No, there, there's not. There's really not. There's only cer yeah. cer certain breeds that kill dogs. But Joel, there's there's, there's potential for a but fight. But Joel, I have a pit bull. I haven't had any problems yet. Good. Go to dog. I don't really care, bro. T take your take your dog to a dog park. My job is protecting my dog and my children. Your your job is protecting your children. If you don't like it at the th place, leave. Can you can you go on record just so I can make like a thumbnail for this, <clears throat> a good title where you just like stop going to dog parks? Yeah, stop going to dog parks. Thank you. That'll just make it It really easy. is true. Find neighbors who have dogs, find family that have dogs. You just move to a new area, go get social and find people. It's, it's, it's kind of enough or go. I, I took Prince an unneutered dog who isn't going to take a lot of nonsense from dogs. I just took him to a dog park. I had a good experience. Be Prince, ready to leave the dog park. How about that? Prince Be needs, ready to not go in. He needs to lift weights a little bit. You think he, he's too skinny? Yeah. He needs to get on the dog testosterone TRT replacement. I think. How old is he? Six, <sighs> five, almost five. Okay. So he's not even five yet. No. So. Oh, wow. He's looking at me. Go. You heard me talk about him. I, I, yeah, I, I've flipped. I'm not, I'm not into him anymore. Yeah. It's like going to a keg, keg party. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Stuff, stuff might pop off. Like if you, get, you might get punched. Well, it's also just like a bar, right? If you, you go to like a, yeah, if you go to a bar and there's, you know, it's one thing to go to a bar at six, 6 PM, right? But there's another thing to yeah. be there at one thirty. you know, and people are, you can also just tell. I haven't been to a bar at one thirty in 25 years. I can't remember. 20? Um, maybe. I've been to, my buddy of mine actually got married. 30 though? He, That's well, no, late, he, he went, um, people are going to laugh at us. They're like, what? You don't, you've never been? No, but I have, well, I've definitely been, but I've, I've closed down plenty of bars in my past, but I'd say yeah. I have not in very long time. And a buddy of mine got married and he had the reception at a bar. Yeah. So I went to the bar. Yeah, I, mean, I was like, okay, this is cool. Hung out for an hour, maybe ninety minutes. I'm like, later, guys. Yeah, have fun. Yeah, I'm going home and going to sleep. Right. You know. So, yeah, it, it, it it's dangerous. It can be dangerous for it's your all about dog and pros and cons, right? Or, or weighing, yes. weighing the risks. And a lot of times, if you see some just, you know, um, pits with the spike collars, you know, you might just want to think twice when you walk into the uh, dog park. Yeah. Any pit. Also, I mean it. It, it kind of extends out to walking down the street, right? I mean, you see, yeah, that dog, uh, oh yeah, let's let him meet. You're like, why? Yeah, why? <laughs> My dog I don't want to be. Wanna meet I don't want to be breedist against the the dog. No, be breedist. Doesn't matter. It's a dog. You don't hurt the dog's feelings. Doesn't matter. There, you know, it literally how... doesn't matter. Just so you guys know, be breedist. The, there is literally though, and this is why the channel does well. Is there is a epidemic of people that cannot control their dogs in this country yeah we talked about that last week but we should talk about it every week oh and um keep going but we should we should read our um our um comments just know our disclaimer at some point just so that we don't get all the oh yeah people like the but disclaimer. Joel... and we should do, we should cut a promo 
We have to cut a promo. I don't know who time. to, but it'll come out. I think I'm gonna do a diet it'll come out. promo. So like. there, there are um, dogs. So what's Prince's problem at a dog park that he's not neutered? Okay, his owner. What's a puppy's problem at a dog park that he's Small. a puppy and he's weak and he could die very easily, easier than Prince? Let's mm-hmm. say what's a skittish dog's problem at a dog park? Dogs like to calm the nervous energy of another dog. Yeah. Okay. What's the, what's the, um, dominant neutered dog's problem at a dog park. He's dominant and he might run into a dog that's more dominant. Okay. What you see, I'm going through every type of dog and there are problems debunked. I thought, yeah, it's totally, it's not, not a real thing, but even, even a lot of people agree dominance between dogs does exist. The, and there are a lot of dogs that have a nervous energy that other dogs just want to stop them from moving. It's so common. I had a dog yesterday come out and we let three dogs with him. Prince was like all on him. This other dog didn't like him and he was a nice dog. And then we had to put both Prince and the other dog away because this dog just in its eye, rapid eye movements and its fast twitch nervous energy and other dogs are like, calm your behind down in a dog park. It's it's mayhem. There could any dog could jump into a fight, which is a thing. There are some dogs that just like they don't start them. It's mob mentality. They just jump into them and then they can do damage. I did something similar to that. There what? was there was a guy and he was he was like in a in an area of room. I won't get into the details of it, but I was like, why is this guy walking around so like bizarre? Like behind people, he was like pacing yeah. and doing worse stuff. And I was like, this guy's. Up, this guy's doing something weird and then yeah. other people were picking up on it too so i think the dogs are just doing yeah what we're doing they're, they're noticing odd behavior. Yeah, odd behavior and they don't know they're like we don't want smoke but yeah. we're gonna smoke you kind of thing right yeah yeah so the the only dog that could go to a dog park there are dogs that just do their own thing they're confident they don't flip over the flip over dogs are not good either the flip over dogs, dogs are like, they don't, they want to get on top of them. They want to dominate them. They want to dominate them because they're so weak. So they're the nicest dog ever and they flip over. Now that's not good. So if you have a big game bred dog, bring it to the dog park. Yeah, that's the only, no, that's the opposite. So the only dog that is, is the dog that comes in, keeps its head up, kind of cruises around, maybe does some play bows, but essentially is doing its own thing. It's not in there doing laps. It's not in there flipping over. It's not in there challenging dogs. It's literally not there. The other dogs are like, this dog isn't even here. So it's like prison kind of again. Yeah. If you do your own thing, maybe you keep you your head well. up, protect yourself at all times. Yeah, that right. is true. But if you roll I on your back, they're going to, they might, can you say they, all, turn, all turn of someone this out? Might. Can you say that on a, sure. On a podcast? Like I this? don't know what it means, but, um, you don't know what that means. No, that's not good. <laughs> Turning out someone in jail is yeah. bad. Okay. Like they'll take a guy and they'll turn him out. Anyways. Well, you're just using the term without explaining the term. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll Google it. Google what I mean. It's basically like sometimes can be referred to as like um making a man in jail like more feminine. Oh, and doing things to him? Potentially. Oh, yeah, that's not good. So yeah. that's not good. Yeah. They also say it with like um um street walkers and things like that oh there's oh yeah 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 anyways so family show though so yeah shouldn't talk about that does that make sense on the uh dog park thing i my opinion is switched and i'm trying to give you guys advice on the dog park most everyone in the comments is going to say yeah no i agree with you we dog parks are terrible i don't know you got dog parks are full full of people at all hours of the day so there's a lot of people who who don't believe that dog parks are can't i think they all agree it can be a dangerous place but, but you, they haven't had the experience of it being dangerous yet but you aren't saying you'll never go i just went you're just saying be, you'll go and analyze the situation that's right and then you'll maybe go yeah 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 i mean it makes sense you should probably do that with anything in life right yeah you should do things assess the situation if it seems bad just go yes Right. Have a plan to get out. Like my story last week of of uh, my do- my son going to a uh, zip line place. Yeah. I literally had a plan. The plan still went south. Yeah. And a bear- very bad thing happened with my plan. Yeah. 
it's like January 6th or something. It's like, hey, you're having fun with your friends. And all of a sudden you go, you know what? I'm going to go home. Let's storm the Capitol. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. Yeah. You like, get mob mentality and you do crazy yeah, you stuff. You start doing it, but it's like you, you still are responsible Bro, for yourself and you have to go. And I know I, we shouldn't be bringing that I, up. I know people that were going to go and just like, seriously. Yeah. Just like go. It was a March, right? They were going to go and they're normal people. It's and then like Washington, how would they go? And, They'd fly there. It's a long way. I know. I think you're you're going, and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna go." Like you know, the letter voice note, and it turns out they're like, if you were even anywhere near there, you're like on some list. Bro. Yeah, yeah. You, you could have been walking down the street with the mob, like, uh, yeah, and not done anything, and you're like, so you're you're on a list. Yeah, there's. I uh, know multiple people that were just like, I didn't end up going. They're so happy right now. People are thinking you're in like one of those weird groups. Bro, yeah. these. What are they called? Like QAnon. There's QAnon and there's another one, Proud Boys. Oh, yeah. yeah people are yeah, going to think yeah. that you're in that. He's not what? in that, guys. Because I just... know two people that were going to that were gonna go. Yeah. Well, you live near the beach now. So I know two live... raging raging liberals that are going to marches, too. Okay. I, yeah. I mean, I know you know all these people. Anyway, you don't know the people I'm talking a few about. Of but... them. Yeah. I'm sure I know some of these people. Um, Man, we got sidetracked. No, it's a good, it's a good talk. But it's true though, right? Like the point of that. Well, if was I went not to that to March and I was just cruising around, I would be nervous right now. Would you have went in the Capitol? <laughs> no, <Probably. laughs> just get no, all worked wouldn't. up. No, of course not. But if you were, if you were cruising around, they know who you are. You were just yeah, walking I mean, down the street. You got. They know thinking. who you are. But no, no one knew that beforehand. Yeah, that, but like, you got to be thinking like. You were going to get on if a you no go fly in list. there, you go like climb a fence and you go in there. Like, oh. come on, bro. Like your life is going to change. Sh- that's not what I'm talking about. You know, that's not what I'm talking about. They know the people that were just walking Around. down oh, the yeah. street with a group and then they just went off or something well, and everyone else went and did their th- bad thing. They know who those people are who are just cruising. Well, yeah, they have They're their like cell following phone. you. They the know planes, everyone's bro. from their cell phones. Oh, they know where you are. Come really? on. Of course. They know they can track no, you by yourself. I know. I know. And then if they want to track you, I don't know if you've seen this. It was from Google, but um, they had the guy, he had one with a phone on and then one with a phone off. And I think they might've had one with a battery off. And they basically did these loops around. I don't know if it was around DC or not, but it was somewhere around there. And um, you can find it on YouTube, but even the one that was off was sending like, as soon as it came online, it knew almost all the stops that were done. So they know where, and it's not like, it's not like a conspiracy. Like, they're sending like the um the signal like sends it to the phone. Yeah, that's so, like, so crazy. Yeah, but so I mean to think if you guys are out there, I'm not giving any advice, but if you're out there and you have your phone on you, I think you should just accept the mean? fact that somebody knows where you are. Like oh. you can't do something with your phone and then think like, oh, I wasn't there. Like so oh. they can find it. And right. did you ever see that or hear about that podcast? It was called like Serial no, or something. No. Man, that was like the biggest podcast like five, 10 years ago. Okay, but anyways, it was great. But they actually got the phone records out and they were trying to like triangulate where he was and like they went real deep into phone records. So mm. if you have a cell phone, they can absolutely find out where you are. Yeah, and can we just not like, I don't want to like puss out here on the how- You can't say that. How hard, how how horrible. Like you were cruising around DC <laughs> and all of a sudden now you're on a list. This is our last podcast, bro. This is. Can we just be, not push out on down. it though? Like how insane that is. That that that's the government. Like what what they're doing. How utterly insane that is. See, I don't know about this stuff. So, and I know I get I get teased by some of the commenters for not being aggressive enough with my opinions about politics and things like that. There's but, a reason for it, though. But my only thought is, I don't know about that stuff. So, like, if somebody went into the Capitol, I'm thinking, that's like, different. Okay, bro. Like, don't go in there and then cry about it. Like, you know what I mean? But if you didn't go in, that's what I'm saying. That'd be scary. But I don't know about this. I believe, yeah. I mean, there's mon, you, you were just, if I, there's monitoring. Hi, What's up, buddy? There's Princey. There's Princey here. Princey, you see that? You guys see him? There he is. Oh, oh that's he, a good he can't boy. see him. Yeah, he's like the same color as my <laughs> sweatshirt. That's funny. Good job, boy. Okay. You, you talk to him like my seven-year-old. Oh, oh, that's a good boy. No, I talk to him like you. That's how you talk to your and dog. Maybe that's you don't why my seven. 
Oh, we, copy, we copy. Maybe that's why my seven year old talks. And what if he like hits those cables and the whole pod goes down? And well, people if, are if like, what's would, Joel's opinion on January 6th? And like, <laughs> if it goes would, to, oh, this and would be it, the time for it to go it off. It goes off. And people are like, so they funny. got Joel. So funny. They got Joel. Yeah. And Eric, so you will, you, you're not going to come go on record whether you were there or not. Okay. I got you. That's fair. I was not there. I can just I imagine more things to do. our Patrick, who is our, our lovely, um, uh, timestamp director, uh, yes. volunteer basis only yes. who does our great timestamps and we tag them or, uh, we pin them. I'm just wondering like what he's going to do on the timestamps for this. Yeah. This it's going to be like <laughs> free reign, bro. Go it's, ahead. It's going to be like something I can't even literally say on the podcast. Probably. It, you know, and then he's going to put it in there, which is fine. He can do yeah. what, what he wants. Cause he's unbelievably good at it. And he's unpaid. <laughs> and we'd pay him no money. We don't even know his name. See, I messed up. So real quick, pod podcast disclaimer. See, I, we met, we should have done it first, right? Hey, if you're looking okay, for you no say nonsense that. dog training tips, please search for one of the more than 500 videos that address your challenges. Specifically, podcast discusses sensitive real world issues like just now uh, that might trigger some viewers. There's going to be a lot of triggering here. Uh, if you're weak, if you're a drone, whatever. A sheep. Hard to, Didn't you yeah. tell him a sheep last time? Yeah. If you're a sheep. Look at, if going down rabbit holes and conspiracy theories, discussions about mafia movies annoys you, don't let the wood door hit you where the good Lord spit you. So I apologize for not getting that into before the J6 stuff. I actually saw this thing that said J6. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell is J6? <laughs> and I Googled it and it You're was not like on January 6th. You don't understand anything. I've been to, like in a hole. Well, you know something. what I do, right? You have two small children. True. That does, that does takes yeah. you like well i also around have, the birth of the last one you're like probably didn't get a lot done you know no, uh, yeah not things like that and then also i i also think about these things because it's it's always fun to see like read the stories and yeah. like go on yahoo and just see like crazy stuff that's being said yeah but then the other side of it is i always think about it go like how is my life gonna get any better oh. just like going down these rabbit you've holes? said that for 10 years to me i've always told you this right yeah and it's like, it's not that I don't it's, have my it own It gets opinions. zero better. Yeah. It's also a it total worse. waste of time. It's a waste of time. Nothing's being done time. while yeah. you're reading about January Except 6th. You can Except fight. your eyes are open. But you can also fight with your relatives at Thanksgiving too. That's, That's nice. True. If you want to start major family feuds, <laughs> yeah. that would be the way to do it. So like maybe if there's a uh, 4th of July picnic or something with your family, you could bring that up. Oh uh, yeah. just really divide the family in half. You know? Yeah. That's not fun or good. In any way, that a whole family dynamic of like, you're here, they're here. Like, there's no middle road. Like, no one, you just hate your family. Yeah, it's not good. And they hate you. Yeah, I just, I always think, I always go back to the, like, the stoic philosophy of like, what, what am I able to change about this situation? And if right. the answer is nothing, right, I'm like, eh, probably yeah. better to just. But this pod, focus. you have a little voice. I do? Yeah. Oh. I mean, more of a voice than you did before it. We got a we got a crew here. We got, we got a crew. listeners. They all agree. They generally agree it's, with us. It's a so, motley crew, but it, it's it a crew. It is a motley crew. We love them. We love them, though. We should give some. We should do some comments and share. But well, I don't want to stop you on your um your park rant. Uh, my park rant, I believe, is over, and I believe um, it went well. It it did go well. And uh, was I was I not truthful there? Oh, I don't understand pit bulls. I understand pit bulls better than anyone in the world. Like this there. isn't from a place of not understanding pits. But Joel. this isn't from a place of not understanding groups of dogs together. It's been 15 years of my house being a dog park. Yeah. A giant dog park. That'll do. That's it all you. it is. Yeah. That's all my facility has ever been. And yeah, what's what's a good I number of dogs better than anyone in the world? Well, everyone who watches this understands oh, your. That's a good, that's a good question, dogs. huh? That's what what about so most people who watch this know about your pasture area? Yeah, the um, grass area. That pasture acres a half acre or no? No, it's quarter not a, acre. Not even that. It's probably a quarter, close to a quarter. Um, uh, I don't want to say where it is, but uh, it's in the country. So quarter acre, I bet I bet it is close to a quarter of an acre. Yes. So let's just Lender. call it a quarter acre. So let's just say for a quarter acre of space. Yeah. What's a nice level of dogs? Now, granted, it depends on the type of dogs, but just where you're like, ah, that's too many dogs to have in that that space. Number that comes to my mind is six. Six for a quarter acre. Yeah. Okay. So like you get 
40 dogs in there, it's a problem. <laughs> It's a giant problem. There's a lot of problems, right? You need to be, you also don't want that many dogs all at one time because you can't really control them either. Right? Oh yeah. Six dogs. I mean, you have six. Great. I mean, have you heard or you can seen own six dogs, six dogs in a fight at one time? Like where there's like a dog, no. like you've never seen that or even on like, uh, I was at YouTube camp, or something. camp run amat. I was the trainer for this giant corporate camp run amat for 10 years. And I went in the yard and there was a giant fight in there, probably because I was in the yard. The, the the newness of a new person coming in weirds groups of dogs out when they're used to just me and my 40 buddies and these three uh, humans in this yard all the time, right? They're employees that rotate, but still. Mm -hmm. And then I came in. We had a giant fight in the yard, and it was it was insane. Sorry. Yes, we're not going to have them sponsor us either. Yeah. That was, it was 15 years ago. Okay. 10 year over 10 years ago at Camp Renamont. Okay. Yeah, they're not sponsoring us. Not anymore. They're not my boys, though. Yeah, you like them, don't you? Yeah. So we were good. Can you we helped each other for many years. People? And I helped every camp run in my open. Can you explain what it is to people? Doggy like, daycare. It's just a, but it's big, right? It's a big, like they have gym areas almost like. Yeah, they're usually like rolling doors, these sort of industrial parks. Um, but they have big outside was areas. Was it in with an turf. industrial park? That one was not. Or was it more like a. It was just like an outdoor area. turf area. No, yeah. turf in the city. They're always in population centers, Camp Renamats. Hmm. They're good. You just got to, um, you, your dog should not go for over four hours ever to a doggy daycare. Remember you made that Unless video? Unless there's four dogs there, which how is it a doggy daycare if there's four dogs there? They're not making enough money and they will go out of business. Remember the do the doggy daycare video you made and they made the thumbnail and then you didn't put the video out? No. I don't remember that. It's a good thumbnail. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, you should do one. You should do like a doggy daycare. Well, let's do it here because it's uh, not that exciting. Give him a two. Give him a, a cut a promo. Cut a sixty second promo. For, we could make a short out of it, and it would be why you shouldn't send your dog to a doggy daycare for over four hours. That's not a promo. That's a talk. We're not trying to get anything. Okay, that's true. Okay, all right. Here's my doggy daycare spiel. Promo. Your dog, <clears throat> if you send your dog, here's the perfect way to send your dog to a doggy daycare facility. Two times a week, four hours per time. That's it. Maybe three times a week, never over four hours. Here's why. Your dog basically is going to go and run and be stimulated for four hours. And if it's eight hours, they may not be able to take a nap. It's eight hours. You are conditioning your dog to need stimulation for an extended period of time. It's not normal to be that stimulated for that long. And so you're conditioning your dog's brain. Pathways are being formed that they need to. So they're going to come home. They're going to sleep all night. They're going to sleep partly into the next day. That's good. That's nice. The problem is you'll ne you'll they'll get addicted to that. You'll never be able, you'll have to on, on your days off or if you stop going or if they get kicked out, they now are going to get all antsy because they're not getting their dose of insanity. insanity yeah. And so that's the problem. Also, leash reactivity is often developed from going to a doggy daycare because they they like the dogs, but they don't like the dogs that much and for that long. So then they, you go home, you walk them, and they're essentially saying, get out of here, other dog. I was with 50 dogs the day before. Yeah, I, I'm not down. I just want to be with my daddy today. It's like they're going to a rave or something. They're just... It's too much. It's too much. And then they want dogs out of their life the next day, the day after. But at four hours, it's like you could go to a dog park for four hours. And it's like right when it's nap time after four hours, I think four hours is a little bit much too, but I'm trying to, if someone goes there eight every day, I'm trying to give them realistic expectations, but like two, three would be the best hours. So does that. And if there's 80 dogs in the, do in the yard, they shouldn't go at all. It's too much. And so you said, and there are places with 80 dogs. I mean, a lot of them eight, they're going there for eight because they have to work, right? They're going, yep. Yeah, so they're in a rock and a hard place. But would you say the same stuff applies to a normal day daycare? What's a normal daycare? A where child send, daycare? Yeah, where they send them out for eight hours. That's probably not great either. That's not good. Same thing, right? <laughs> the, the, same principles apply. Similar. Do you remember last week we were talking about the pet industrial complex wanting you to get a dog? You brought it up so that you can buy food and send them to vets. And, yeah. and off-grid dogs was like, absolutely. You brought a great point that I'd never thought of, of 
the society wants you to get a dog because they want to make money off you getting a dog and you're going to spend a tremendous amount of money over the, that dog's life, including doggy daycares and including vets and including food mm -hmm. and all that. The whole thing about daycare, like they want you to send your kid to daycare so you can go in the workforce and drive this economy. I That's it. Like, I think That's the like only subtle. reason. I don't think it's, it's like a conspiracy. I think it's oh, just it's like totally subtle. But it's like it's like the That's daycare why they thing, want you. or it's like not the daycare, but it's That's like why the they pet want industrial. daycare. So you can get back. Your wife can go back to work. But the pet industrial Contribute complex, I think, is a, not. It's parent. not like bad, or I mean, it's bad, of course. But um, it's not. It's not like it's a conspiracy. People no. thought about it. It's just that like it, the wheels are turning. That's right? how the, things work, though. Like yeah. your doctor, my doctor, like they don't want. They don't want you to be sick, but the, 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 but if no one's sick, then hospital, all these places go out of business. Luckily for them, they <laughs> don't really have to worry. So they about don't really that. want you to be sick, but sickness is what kind of drives the whole thing, but they don't have to worry about and that. And surgeries apparently. drive the whole thing. Right. Well, Cause there's mean? so many sick people that like, they're probably, what older. if they're all healthy people? Though? Well, I've heard this too about older folks. Um, it's, 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 it's. it's what is well, it? I don't want to like say subtle. older. I don't want to say older. I want to say like, so certain people, like I know guys that are in their sixties, for instance, and they'll say, oh, I need to get my knees replaced or I need to get my hip replaced or something. And then they'll say, well, I talked to my doctor about it. And they're like, the doctor says, there's 250 guys I know that are like clients that have the exact same problem that you do with your knee. Like yeah. you're not getting it fixed or you could potentially go on the waiting list or whatever, but it's the same problems are happening with a bunch of people across the board. Like it's really bad. Like we're in bad shape oh, as really? a society. Okay. You didn't know this? You yes. live by the beach. So you think like everyone is a hard body that. No, you know, I think we're, yeah, we're in bad shape. You excluded or no? But does, uh, I'm in good shape. Oh, how's your working out going? Are you not great? You've been slacking. Yeah. We got rid of our gym membership. Why? We got a little gym because financially, we got a little gym at the house, a little gym set up at the house. How much was it, bro? Crazy um, for all what, five of you? No, five. Yeah, yeah, it was like two something up, two fifty. Oh, that's not bad. They gave you a month. deal for having a whole. And there group. was four of us. Oh no, there was five youngest? of us first. Then we were like, the kids aren't going that much. They're already so busy. And then it was three of us. And then now it's none of us. But I don't. Who I, was it? Was I, it your your middle child that was actually keep going? The youngest. Cause he did oh. a little fight class and my other oh. kids surf and do football so much. And the little one wasn't doing it. So he, he went, okay. That makes but sense. we just don't do it enough. Now it's at the house. Now I'm a trainer yelling at me. You don't, yeah. You don't need it though. You know me. I don't believe in that stuff, but I need to, I need, I need to be strong within myself. Out. Yeah. You need to work out, but like, there's so much, you know, what's fun is burpees. Like if anyone says like, oh, I don't have any equipment, I can't do it. It's oh like, yeah. Go you do, can do a lot without equipment. Do a bunch of burpees. 20 minutes of burpees and you'll cry like a baby. Yeah. You know, burpees so it's like, great. it's all about, it's like eliminating the excuses. Can we, yeah. can we get to my main topic? Not my main topic. That was your main topic. It was. Okay. This secondary topic, LA wise, the most liked comment from our last podcast. I had that one. That they disagree too. with me as you should. Okay. Cause I have some thoughts on this LA wise. Let's light them up. Let's go. All right. LA wise, you and I are going to have you it. want to do this? You ready? I have to disagree with you about, and this is in quotes, if you can have kids, you should. One, I'm not sure I said if you can have kids, you should. 15-year-olds can have kids. That's can, not my point. Are you trying to ruin this podcast? Or like, you want the algos to go crazy here? Come All right. On. All right. Careful. There are a ton, a ton in capitals. I'm not mad at LAYs, by the way, because all of you guys liked it. There are a ton of people who should absolutely not have kids. They shouldn't have kids any more than they should have a dog. There are far too many people having kids for the same reason they get a dog because they want something to love them. They need to get themselves sorted out first. That's where I disagree with LA Wise. You need to have kids for the right reasons to be meant and to be mentally and physically emotionally and financially prepared for the huge responsibility of children. In my work, I see way too many children screwed up by parents who should never have had kids in the first place. Okay, they need to get themselves sorted out. What do you disagree with there? Nobody's ready for kids. Nobody. I think you read that differently. Nobody's ready for kids, bro. Hey, no. hey, Eric, are you ready for your wife for your relationship with your wife, your sexual relationship with your wife to go down the hill? Are you ready for are you ready to start fighting with her way more than you ever did? 
hey, are you ready? Are you ready to be stressed out way more than you ever have? No one's ever ready for kids. I'd like to. No, no, it's a serious question. The grounds that I might incriminate myself. Were, are you? Were you? That's exactly what happens. What I, I just said I always think, happens. Here's what. Are I you think, ready for that? Here's why I'm going to agree with him and disagree with you. I'm going to join. That's the, I'll fine. be sixty number sixty eight of the uh, of <laughs> like the folk, of the likes on there. No one's ready. Thing. Remember, I said this. We're talking about you know. If you're married, you have anyway. I'm sticking to it. Should you get a Conan Corsa? Remember, what did I say about that? No, I said you know. I was like, 60% of people shouldn't even own a dog. Why would they get a Conde Corso, right? Okay. Like, And then, as you've said, probably at yeah, dog parks, probably 80% of the folks are not really in great control of their dog. Okay. So if they are incapable of handling the dog, then it becomes, you know. Society's are, problem. I mean, the question is, Dangerous. are they, like, I guess the question is like, he's saying, are you in a position or are you ready? No one's ready. And you're going to say, yeah, no one's ready. But then I would still say, but there's people who will never be ready. That's agree, a problem. But the problem is you're not going to know if you're not ready till you have them. Should Jeffrey Dahmer have had kids? No. So, but, but here's my point. Uh, most people, many people have them and they, it's the only thing that gets them ready. Like they have them and they turned out being good parents or terrible parents, but you never, you would have never known unless, unless you had them. Plus if everybody who shouldn't have who shouldn't have kids didn't have kids do you realize there's a population problem in the country you're not going to talk about the underpopulation problem are you i am he's <laughs> watching elon musk too much he knows what he's talking about if everyone who shouldn't have them doesn't have them we have we have a big we have a big problem i don't think i don't know if it affect me i don't know if it affect me for 50 years i think it is a problem though we have 3 going on 4 so, oh, <laughs> we're not having a fourth. Okay. That was determined yesterday. Okay. And if we you, apologize if, if for you, airing out your dirty laundry on the you, last I, I volunteered the information. If you know how you know when you're not having a kid, that happened. And so we know we're not having a kid. Wow. That's plenty of information. <laughs> hey, it's the podcast. You got to be honest. The bro. pod. The, it's like family. You got to be honest on this thing. What? Yeah. So, That's okay. So people like us. For now, three. Three again for now. Three for now. Three we'll for wait now. till next month. It's like a crapshoot every month. If you ever need like a, what do they call it? Vasectomy? I'm not doing it. I have um, I have some old I'm hunting not, knives in here. No, yeah, I've been to the doctor and it was after the doctor that I went to talk about that to the vasectomy guy. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. He's like, um, <laughs> he's like, yeah, you're going to be awake. And I'm like, oh. And Girl, then, what do you mean awake? <laughs> He's like, we're going to put some local numbing agents, but you're awake for it. That's how it's always done. I'm like, oh, okay. And then he goes, and it's done by feel. It's always done by feel. There's no, there's like one way to do this. Uh, there's probably more than one, but the vast majority, he goes, we just go in and we do this and it's done by feel. And I'm like, okay. And then, and then I called back and I go, can I not be awake? And they're like, okay, yeah, you can be put and under. People with dental problems get put. Yeah, sleep, bro. And then I ran into, I know two guys of one of which, you know, and this is the real deal. And I would like people, I don't this know if I want people to call this stuff. He goes, he goes, yeah, it doesn't feel the same. And I go, mm, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. You're really letting people into the, the depths of the mind of Joel. Who? Yeah. That two people, two, two men said that. Okay. That's we'll, we'll just when did when this. did you go? How many years ago? A year, two years ago. Okay, maybe you don't have the memory of the first two years of your youngest. You know what I mean? I don't know. So like that's the, the, the reason. lack of sleep and the nah, screaming. I, I, like I, maybe you've kind of forgot about. Hey, it. Hey, we're gonna do this thing to you, and it's going to minimize your joy, but potentially minimize a. a, a a nice part of your life, the enjoyment of it for the rest of your life. I'm not, I'm not doing that. So instead of the dog park thing, should we just like, like talk about like, or like make like a thumbnail about vasectomies? Like <laughs> Joel, Joel refuses we vasectomy. Yes. That would be an interesting. I think that might get some clicks. So I want to ask you because this is obviously about me. I'm not going to ask you any private questions. 
did what if, if what I said is true, which it is, I told you exactly what the doctor said. I told you exactly what two guys said, one of which, you know, mm -hmm. and I think you were there for the conversation when he said it. In fact, yes, I was there. When I was there. Greg said it. I remember. Okay. Um, shout out you, Greg. <laughs> should we say his last <laughs> name on here <laughs> and where he lives? Um, <laughs> I was just going to say his nickname. That'd have been funny. Um, um, do you, would, do you disagree that that is something that I should be very, uh, uh wary of? I mean, you should always be very wary of it, but like, would you do it? Like, I, I maybe you have, I don't know. Do you know that? There's a, me. there's a libertarian bend I have constantly, which is, oh. it's just a way that I, I think, I'm so, interested. you know, don't get mad at me, everyone for having that libertarian bend to me. Great. Go. But what it really is, is you are free to do whatever you like, oh, yeah, but great. you need to accept, accept the consequences. consequences. I'll accept them. Right. So, I'll but accept yeah, them. you, you will accept the consequences. I'm not sure five years from now, whether I'd be willing to accept the consequences. I agree with that. I'm hoping. Yeah. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm still, you know, young <laughs> stallion, but <laughs> I'm not, not as old as you are. But. That is true. No, that but I'm true. just saying there will be a point where I will say, I don't, care i don't want any more kids at a certain yeah, point yeah i i, I have I kind of flew over that already but you know, yeah you know i get i get what you're all saying. right so that's that's wow. the deal with that what, what no wows this is a normal adult conversation it is i know luckily we have all adult on a dog uh, podcast viewers. i know <laughs> no we had we had one young viewer they commented dog parks j6 fast sex <laughs> okay <laughs> Wow. There's stuff women can do, right? Um, and my wife's not doing it. So so I'm like, she's like, it's bad for you. So I'm like, okay, that's bad for you. You don't do it. Great. I'm not doing it. Why okay. is Prince scratching? We're in an impasse because he's like a cat. He's like, he's going to go to yeah, the like he, or no? No, he's okay. circling the, okay. there he goes. He's laying he want, down. He wants the carpet to be in a perfect spot. Yeah, the dog scratch. We had some really good comments. Should we go over some of them? Or should yeah, we, we keep should. talking about vasectomies? <laughs> Please, no. Um Please no. This one actually is. Uh, I'm just will, trying to be bother honest. you in multiple ways. So Honesty is one. good. Melody Ramsey, and you know, so wait, she, she has all the things. She has can you hold about, that? Yeah, go ahead. Because we, the comments are like, you guys are all over the place, and we are. We've talked about three things so far. We are not all over the place, but I don't want to jump off of La Wise, and oh yeah, I just want to button that up before we move on. That's so, how we got on the vasectomy that's thing. That's how we got on the vasectomy thing. Okay, you need to get yourself sorted. Okay, I don't. I I I know what he's saying. Everyone agreed with him, so I know the pod knows what he's saying too. If Lois is a guy, um, pretty sure it is. Okay, I just don't know if people are ever really ready. That's really my point. I I agree with you, people. There are many people who shouldn't get kids. I don't want to act. I don't want to just be contrarian and like go hard with my opinion. I agree with it. People I just don't know. There's a they they turn out being good parents with good kids and if 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 any if everyone waited till they're ready no one would have kids so okay you heard it from joel you should wait <laughs> you, i don't know how you've seen idiocracy right married people should have a lot of kids have you seen Keep idiocracy no it's with luke wilson it's pretty funny yeah, i only saw like the he, first 10 great. minutes and it basically is it by mike judge I think so. Yeah. Yeah. You did see this. No, no. I just know Mike judge the beginning, and his work. The beginning is funny because it basically says like it shows this dystopian world and it was basically the idea they were making fun of how like, um, oh, all the people who shouldn't have kids. Have no, kids. all the guys that have I heard kids, about him on Rogan. I yeah. All the Rogan. guys who are like yelling at their wife and they are like living in squalor, so to speak. Right. They're all like just, oh, there well, now we're having another kid. Now we're having another kid. And then they show this like well put together uh, couple that you know, makes a bunch of money and they're like, well, we're really thinking about it. We're almost yes. there. And then they're like 40 and eventually it this. shows that like they, they're, they're not able to have them anymore. So it's just showing like, exactly. Everyone has kids who, who they would say in this shouldn't. movie shouldn't. Right. And then all the like really cautious, educated folks that have all the money wait till they can't. And then they're like showing the world as it would become because of this. Fact. And how did it become? It was like a dystopian oh, Mad really? Max mania oh, wow. craziness. I would argue a little bit though that you know, oh, the the put together educated kid people should also be the ones um, not having kids. Wow, you gotta work. You gotta never mind. You do what you want. <laughs> You're free to do what you want. Do you? I, I believe you know in your I'm right saying? to say whatever you want, and I, you know, with the consequences that come with that. Just 
education level is is your um barometer for being i like a that good people parent is silly i like that people don't agree with you that's a good sign i like it's that a I, healthy podcast a for healthy sure pod, you know and i like la wise la wise is a long time coming that's and not you, what you guys said before you dis- got here i you love said you the hated disagreements them. <laughs> okay. i'm kidding uh can Obviously. we go to melody now yeah okay um this podcast got off the rails like a while ago yeah. in a way like 20 episodes ago, 30 episodes i meant in this podcast got oh, off yeah. the rails yeah vasectomy well, talk is great dude there's not enough talk about it i didn't I know never, i, I didn't, never hear about it. i haven't heard about it it's a, we're I breaking, heard about it since the last time we talked that was two years ago when that guy was saying in the that. parking lot yeah the, um we're breaking walls on this thing you got to talk about vasectomy we're t- breaking lot. walls yeah you want to tell them to get their uh their what is it the colon checked or what is it prostate checked while we're at it they should get that checked. you want to cut a promo for prostate checks can you imagine being the doctor that does that i mean you're you're a doctor but you're not like stoked on that but they're laughing to the bank though because those uh, urologists are making coin i don't think it's just urologists that do it though maybe not i don't know i mean i don't know it's just i, don't know. I would not enjoy that but i guess i'm a doctor the I antis- guess I got to just do things I don't want to do. <laughs> the anticipation like when aggressive from this- dogs come out to me, I'm like, this is not that enjoyable for me. No, I know you hate it. Or you I don't, don't hate, hate it. it. You don't hate it, but you definitely, it wears on your central nervous system. My wife goes, I watch those sessions from the window. She says that and she's like, I'm, sh- I'm, I'm nervous. My heart rate is racing. She's like, I don't know how you do it. I know. It's going to take a couple years off your life. No doubt about it. Yeah. A couple two but you'll i'd be in bed like wanting you know like you have a lot doing though. well anyway when you're gone you know when you when you're you, absolutely right bro when you're gone though there'll be the pod we'll live forever <laughs> and so will the channel people will be like that guy was a good freaking dog trader imagine that when you get when you're a man maybe a woman too but when you're a man and you think you do something well or you have an audience like legacy becomes a weird thing like I never thought you, the, you hear men talk about that sometimes or like if you're the president of the United States, you're, you're like want to leave like a legacy and yeah. you're just a normal dude. Like, where's your legacy? You can be a good father. That's a legacy. A good husband. You can be a good employer. But there really isn't yeah, anyone to that? listen. <laughs> okay, who cares? Um, but when you actually have like an audience, like I care about, I care about what people say about me when I'm gone or when I stop doing this, but which th- is weird. But you think though, also like, I mean, don't you think that uh, like the people that are alive, people are like ah, whatever, who cares about Joel? But then yeah. that like cult following when when you're gone, but your videos remain, yeah. people are gonna be like, don't That's talk crap about Joel. That's what I want. That's my guy. Yeah, you know? he changed a, the game. There's a certain love that or the Prince. people that have passed on have, or Bosco, or Bosco, right? Yeah, Bosco is like elevated now. Yeah, and we there's not that many videos of him. He Prince, there's gonna be a zillion us. videos of him. He watches over us. Yeah. You know? Okay. This is going to be the most anticipated <laughs> question ever. Or comment, whatever it was. You better not ask me anything because apparently I'll say anything <laughs> I on this podcast. I know. I, I get, we both get blamed for taking it off the rails. Uh, I unfortunately do it on purpose. Uh, I hate to tell you, Eric, but there are two reasons that cats pee outside of the litter box. This is two strikes for me. One, because that was my name in it. Second, because it's talking about cats. They are sick or have behavioral issues. Do all of your cats go outside or just the one cat? Because if it's just one cat, then he probably doesn't know the difference between going outside and inside. Also, if it's the oldest cat, he might be fearful of your other two if he's not sick. I hear people clicking off as we speak. Yes. So let me answer this. (laughs) Cat talk. Uh, You're right. It is the oldest. It likely it is behavioral. It was probably because of the other two um, cats that were brought into the house. But... It did know how to use the litter box for a very long time. It was pee and poop. Um, okay. Where it was going out, out of the litter box. So that's your answer All right. for those. Um, for the cat people. But at the of end of the day, I it didn't matter now. because it was just not going in the box no matter what. And so that's why it's an outside cat. Okay. So clear uh, that up. Straighten those folks out. And then I, I have to throw a couple of love or a little bit of love to the Kylie, Kyle, Kyle Goerick or something. Uh, most dog people are actually cat people really just prefer the look size variety of a dog and the lifestyle often associated with a dog. The life of a dog owner is portrayed as active family oriented, etc. 
cat owner is often portrayed as lonely and stagnant. That is true. It's a funny kind of comment, huh? Yeah, that is true. All right. To L.A. Wise's point, man, this didn't get any likes, but it's probably just because it happened like a few hours ago. People, in quotes, what I said, people should have kids. Okay. I totally disagree. I've seen a lot of people that had no business having kids and can barely take care of themselves. It should be approached with a lot of thought and consideration. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. I agree it's life changing or should be. Sadly, it's not always the case. I mean, you're like a dog with a bone with this whole con this conversation. What do you mean? Like, you're just like rehashing the same thing just written by somebody else. Yes, that's the exact same thing. Um, people should have kids. That's my quote. If they quoted me right, they should. Unless and no one's ready. Unless they don't want to. Well, you're saying don't. even if they, you're saying even if they don't want to, they should. That's not. I don't think that's what I'm saying. I, I need something for the for the thumbnail. So just give me something. Some red. Oh yeah. We can Everyone should audience. have children. Yes. Which is not what I said. I thought this was super funny. Uh, Ver Veridzel says, Veridzel. "Is dog training part of the big pet industrial complex?" Oh, would you scratch your eyebrow point. if it was? That's a pretty good comment, oh, huh? I'm not ready to scratch. That's a great comment. You know about? Will you let people <clears throat> complain? People have been complaining about the inside jokes that we have Ooh. and i'm like these aren't inside jokes that we have this is pod inside jokes right if you've seen the 36 oh the scratching of the arrow yeah well that if oh. you've seen the podcast <laughs> all of them then it's not this isn't inside baseball this is all right this is all inside jokes and there's people who've the seen podcast. all of them we'll get comments and they're like i watched the last 30 podcasts over two weeks like, yeah what it's crazy that's so tell them about the scratching the eyebrow 60 hours where that came from great joke. if purina gives us a million dollars i will take the money and i will recommend it i will recommend it on this podcast but if i'm saying how great purina is and that i was wrong and that i took it back and then but 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 i'm going to scratch my eyebrow during when the i'm pitch. telling you to buy purina that's our deal yeah so this person remembered that and, and yes. did it but i also thought it was a great question about it is. is dog training part of the pet industrial complex i say yes i say yes I mean, anything that's making money and you Bro. can see it from the, um, from the just like madness of YouTube and all the like industrial complex that comes out of the drama. Yeah. The YouTube thing I would say is a smaller part of that, but look at, go, go look at dog trainers. Just Google dog trainers right now. Don't leave the pod and do it. Google dog trainers. And you're going to see all these dog trainers with all these letters after their name. And they're so proud of it. Guess what all those letters are? These are organizations that will certify you, that will train you, that you can go to their school, that you can, that's, that's the, that's the pet industrial complex but right aren't there we more do than that anything. Too? Yeah. But we won't have the number. But we're going to be letters. good at it. And we'll probably won't have these stupid letters. Beckman dog training certified. We might. We should. We have not launched. We're now giving them the, that there's going to be a school. Yeah. It'll be bad. Well, now we have to. You were about to say it's going to be bad, but you were going to say badass. Right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then I'm like, you got to correct yourself. Yeah, you're it's right. It's going to be a mentorship program, not a school. And I ha we're going to launch it soon. And it's, hey, it's going to be by geography because we're once you become a certain level, we're, I'm going to send you people. It's going to be a mentorship based on results. Oh, am I cutting a promo? Or are we, are we Go going ahead. That, that hard it. with it? Cut it. All right. <clears throat> we're launching uh, Beckman Mentorship program and we are going to be results based you're going to meet with me over zoom or 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 youtube closed whatever we're gonna we're gonna go through you have to be kind of a current dog trainer or at least have some dog experience eric's going to be the business side of things you got to have the social media aspect we're going to teach you how to train a dog like prince to have, be a helper dog we're going to teach you how to use your facility even if it's an apartment to do things like me and we're going to be with you every step of the day. You're going to have a communication with us to make you a great dog trainer and a dog trainer of integrity. Mm -hmm. That's, and it, it's going to, we're not going to take that many people. It's going to be by geography. So we'll take people from different states and it's going to be amazing. I've never <clears throat> offered anything like this. I, I offered a school many years ago and they'd come to my facility and we'd do a week of things. It's I'm not going to, I'm not going to teach you operant conditioning. There's a book. 
We're going to read. I'll read it with you. It's Don't Shoot the Dog. Here's your operant conditioning book by Karen Pryor. We're going to be results-based, results in business, results in your actual dog training, results in your social media. You're going to have to pick something. It doesn't have to be YouTube. It could be TikTok. It could be Instagram. I'll, I'm going to, but we're, we're going to help you, Eric and I, mainly me, but Eric's going to help you the business. Can I cut a promo too? Yeah, that's my promo. That's a good promo. I like your. And we might have a belt system. We haven't decided, or we call it we a should. collar system. We should. Where you start at the lowest belt or lowest collar, it might send you a collar for your dog, right? A black collar. Well, black would be the highest. And then once you get to like blue belt, what is it? Blue or purple? We'll start sending you people. And you might get there fast and you might get there slow. We'll send you people when you're ready to help the people. And the reason for that is just that there's a, a lot of emails from people that need help that don't all over get the answered. country. And they just ask me, Hey, do you know anyone in Minnesota? You go, no, we don't no. actually, we don't even say that. We just don't respond. I can't respond to those emails. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Or why would you? Cause you but if you're say. interested in this from the podcast, it's, it's Beckman ventures at gmail.com. And you got to tell us why you want to do it. Experience with dogs. And that's Et mainly it. Yeah. My promo, I haven't thought of this side. Yeah. Second, I did it off the cuff. I'd say, my promo is, first of all, we're going to, on the social media side, we're going to teach you to not do a podcast like this. Yeah. Uh, you don't, <clears> don't talk do about podcast, January vasectomies, 6th, yeah. you know, and vasectomies. Don't so do this podcast. yeah, but if you decide not to do that, um, <laughs> well, but I think it is, like you said, results based is what it's all about. And it's about getting the clientele and working with the tough dogs, because if you That's don't right. work with the difficult dogs, you're not going to make a ton of money because if you're just going to do sits and stays, Everyone can do that. There's mm. lots of people. And so working with the aggressive reactive dogs, that's where people Difficult. will be willing to pay for. And so learning that and then, but also it's not for everyone, right? Like we're not going to sugarcoat it. Like you go, like you just said, going out there and your wife's like, uh oh, he's got a borble out there and it's aggressive and reactive, right? So this is not, but there is to. And I'll guide you. Maybe that you're not ready for the, you can do the program, but you're not ready for those dogs. Yeah. And nor should you, yeah, you should start slow. You start and, slow and yeah. build your way up. Yeah. And that's then you can make a living, a good living. That's where the mentorship comes in. Yes. Is the idea it's a of mentorship. Like, and it's funny too, because no one wants to be, or people want to be mentored, but no one ever wants to be slowed down. Right. And be like, Hey, you're not ready for that <laughs> We're yet. Speed you up. But, but I, I think the thing is, is you've been doing obviously training for your whole life, but you've been doing the dog training for like 15 ish years. And so the idea is to help them cut the line so that they're not like bro they're not trying to be um learning all or like for instance there's some stuff like th with the group classes there, there were some other things that you did that you were like yeah it's fine there's also different um associations you can do and you're kind of like these are just not valuable for me and so i'm gonna help you cut the line that's yeah, a good you, way to you help it. them cut the line and then i think so if they came to me and said hey should i get certified by this thing and i'm gonna have, it's gonna see say pd tt after my name and we'll have a conversation about that and yeah. Maybe it is right. Most likely it's not, but I need to tell you why it's not. Yeah. And my no thought, one cares. That's why it's not. My thought is to, um, especially from the business side of it, if I think about this channel and like the decision that, that, uh, or the talk about going and doing YouTube and how that has obviously been incredibly fruitful. Right. But there's the comfortability that came from being in front of the camera, doing a lot of videos. We've learned a lot in the process of this. And now it is a, a situation where there's too many clients, not enough people. And I mean, you're already charging as much as you feel comfortable. I always bug you about charging more because you can, but at the same time, you want to have access for everybody. But ultimately I'm big and you know this, I'm into the, where do you want to be the vision? Like what type of dog trainer do you want to be? And then how do you want to get there? And then really thinking about like, do you want to grow a business where it'll support you? Speaking of, you know, pet industrial complex, like getting something that you can raise a family yeah. with, but then it also matters. like being judged from a results-based situation where it's like, what is working? What is not working? What's your business plan look like? Let's look right. at the business plan. Are you implementing it? Yep. And that's where it becomes more of a coaching thing where it's like, coaching. it is mentoring, but there's also the coaching side right, where it's right. like, Hey, you're not executing and you're not going to get where you want to go because you're not following the plan. And yep. it's not, it's not like an arbitrary plan. It's a result, a results-based plan, you know? Yep. And so you got to hit them with it, but I don't know. I don't know how we got into talking about dogs again. I know. Can we get back to um, <clears throat> somebody else? Oh, under duress did the same thing. Oh, under duress. He did the eyebrow signal. I can't believe it. He really did it, uh, even though it was the other eye. That's good memory. Um, oh, the eye thing, the eyebrow thing. Yeah, so that was the second person that, that yeah. remembered it. You might have just done it. Um, thought this was interesting. 
Dude Vicious says, I must say after watching Pet Fold, I have been giving my boy raw feed or raw beef. He loves it, but it, but it is expensive. Yeah, well, next week, we're going to most likely have somebody on the podcast that has a lot of experience or I really don't know what she does. I don't think she does it for a living. I don't even want to say because if she does. Yeah, well, I've talked Talk to her. It. She's going to do it most likely. Um, oh, someone who has a lot of experience with raw and how to do it. And I think how to source like how to get it. And we're going to ask her all those questions Nice on the podcast next week. She's going to be on, I think, video, not call on. That'll be great. She doesn't live here, so she's got to do it by video. Video. Our fine. first video guest. Yeah, we've never had it. We've had two in-person guests, in person, which was bro. actually crazy. They both travel here. To yeah. Be on. From far away. I think. Which was nice. Yeah. Um. Mizzy Miski says, I thought this is a great comment. And she's referring to the last video about the golden retriever lifespan issue. And the, the golden retriever, retriever lifespan issue was that the they dog went from 16 to 10, 10. 12 or so. Yeah, yeah. Like, like the, the lifespan of golden retrievers has went down dramatically in the last call it 50 years. Yeah. Um, about the golden retrievers lifespan, Dr. Ian Dunbar went on one of Karen Becker, Rodney Habib's, uh, podcast and explained yes. about this. He explained that there was once this male golden retriever who won a very prestigious dog show. He became an extremely popular stud where he sired a ridiculous amount of puppies who then went on to bear their own litters and so forth. It was later discovered that this popular stud was not exactly the healthiest dog in the world. And those bad genes spread through the golden retriever breed that it was possible, impossible to clear it out of the gene pool. That's an interesting com or comment, huh? Can you imagine? One golden retriever stud can change the breed all over the world 30 year late 30, 30 years later. Especially, but think I mean, about is it. Is that possible? Is he right? I think so. I mean, the thing one is one dog, is, but if you're if it's becomes this prestigious thing where it, it also matters how unhealthy the dog was, right? Yeah. Because if the dog was super unhealthy, it could really drive the numbers down if like well let's assume he's super unhealthy and let's assume he gave birth to the stud 300 yeah dogs 200 100 but i mean you have to think if it could have been in the, the 70s or the 80s that's what i know it was I so if it, it was, was in the 80s i think golden retrievers i mean they come along i mean that's a long time for it yeah to you'd have to have a lot of time you'd have to have a lot of dogs and you'd have to have a gene mutation or i guess that is always transferable like it can't be like half the time the dogs are healthy. It's got to be like 100% of his offspring have some mutation that's always passed on and continues to be passed on and is not dormant or is not. But think about it. It's it's like it's just, a, it seems crazy. It's to like me. whether you think about the family tree or or yeah. anything like that. It's like it doesn't it doesn't take much interference at the top end of it or the bottom, depending on how you're looking. That's at what the he's tree, saying. Where it's like if you have you know one in four are causing major issues, but it, it would have had to have been really high level, right? Yeah. He had to have a lot of puppies. He'd have to have, and it would have to have been a long time ago. But you have and to think of the inbred, Think about with the inbreeding that goes on, like, whereas like a purebred, there's just so much of that where it would be. Yeah. It's more likely a prevalent, but I don't know. I'm not what saying it's that? real. I love the fact that we just read someone's comment and we're like, maybe it's true. We well, don't I know. mean, he had, she said, Karen Becker, who was, I think the vet on that thing that we, um, the vet on the YouTube uh, video about food. And then D D Ian Dunbar is a very well-known dog trainer. He's a vet. He wrote a book I read. Um, he's talked about a lot. I like Ian Dunbar. He's sort of, I think he, he was like positive and then, and then, but he doesn't totally subscribe to it. So I think they've kicked him out of their force free world. I think I don't, you know. gotta follow, you know what I mean? Like you need to follow exactly what someone else says. If you, if you think differently, you need to be cast out into the dark realm. Oh, yes. You, uh, you need to be in a bubble. There's no room for independent thought. You yeah. Know? You'd be in a bubble. <laughs> you listen to, you're on Facebook groups, you read the same books, and you guys go out into the world. And, and quit you... questioning things, you know? Like if, like your overlords will tell you what you need to know. Yeah. Quit questioning. Right? Yeah. Can I do another one? It's enough questioning things. Yes. This one actually, uh, I know you don't like it when I tell or do ones where people like rant and rave about the podcast, but um, we you read this to me before we started, which is the Melanic. Uh, Eric and Joel still following you guys religiously, still making me laugh seriously out loud. 
uh eric just let your cats go remember you said that and then i was like what i think not you guys are upfront and authentic and that is why i believe you attract listeners on a serious note i agree with the content regarding getting a dog for the wrong reason i see it all the time and it's an issue that people do not own up to glad you guys are bringing it to the surface it's such a sticky and risky subject to confront i've uh, clearly if cared about viewers you wouldn't be talking about things like vasectomies and so yeah. forth so um but yeah anyways it, it kind of goes on and then the, she's also announces that she's a cat lover also so yeah take that to the we're all cat lovers put here. that in your pipe and smoke it me yeah yeah there's a lot of cat talk on here that's actually probably why you, you yeah i said yeah. it and you were like no one watches this for cats and then everyone's like cat, i have cats but i have four dogs you have two cats. you've really helped me no i'm reading oh. the thing yeah um hey i have a question about your cats i was just thinking you have like big like gnarly cats you don't even have normal cats why don't you let them out? Or, I wanted to bring my my Don't cat. bring him in here. Prince would oh, be yeah. like, what? Oh, he loves cats. But. When he, when, oh, my cat would freak out. Yeah, I know. Your my cat, cat will freak out about you. Why? But nothing can kill your cats. No, but what I would say is. I don't know why you keep them The in. next week, or you we should show my, my Bengal cat. Because that actually, people would like to look at it. But bangle. does he go outside? It's a she, and she does not. Why? She goes, but like, I'll yell at her and tell her. But why? Because. I don't want her to get eaten by a coyote. You have a Bengal cat. Yeah. Dude, coyotes. I've seen fights of coyotes like like backing down or not getting normal cats. How big is your cat? I know it's not giant. She's actually not that big. Oh, really? But she is. She's smaller than the two rescues that we got. And she's but she's the most formidable because she's a but she's a she's bigger than a normal cat. No, no not really. Uh, she's a fourth generation Asian leopard cat, though. So like her intensity and athleticism is is noticeable. Then she'd be fine. I feel like. Oh, I also don't think she could get caught slipping either. Like there's a yeah, level of that's wildness. That's why cats live. Or you know, there's other they cats and they're caught. just like, <laughs> Durr. Like, yeah. they're, they're just so unaware of what's going on. And like uh, the other two cats that are indoor actually could also go outdoor as well. Um, like I, I know people were... Um, the pod seems to have no issues with the fact that the oldest one's outside, but the oldest one absolutely loves it. And the other two, Both I think our cats love would it. be, would be totally fine being outside. Yeah. Like I think they'd want to be both, but they are, they're built different. The, cause they're both kind of like a Bengalish feel to them. And yeah. they are very, I don't want to say skittish. The skittish middle is one is very good. skittish. Yeah. Skittish is good for the wild. Oh yeah. The other one, the middle one, that's that I had some type of trauma. We got her from the um, humane society. She, she will fight to the death for sure. And yeah. also she doesn't trust anybody or anything. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, them to die. That's what we're going through. Our little, our kittens that are not totally kittens anymore. They love it outside, but the little ones jumping the fence and jumping over the fence. And my daughter's freaking out. And I'm like, these cat, we're, they got to go outside though. My cat we're in a rock and hard place, so we're gonna get yeah, we're gonna get um, air tags, and uh, so we can at least track them. What are you gonna do when you track them? Go get them. Try, try to find them. Just open a can of tuna. Yeah, that's we got a whole plan, getting, whole training plan. My hey, the, we should we should what? Keep going. Wrap this thing up. We got we have uh, you got something more to do. minutes. You got something. To no, do. we're good. We're good. Go ahead. Um, so my cat or the backyard, there is um like a gap in between. So like the, the, um, yeah, it goes in the between. fences go like this. And so that's like one of the hangouts that the cat has. It's actually a very yeah, safe spot. And it can come back in, but it goes into the neighbor's yard, but it also hangs out inside that little gap area where I don't think a, a coyote could get in there. So it's, yeah. it's like smart. It learned of a spot that it could, it could do. So you have a comment or you want me to read one? You read one. All the com, all the likes of the comments were just sucked up by LA wise's comment. Like no one liked, Let's say the next like comment is five and two and oh, 15. But everyone liked LA Wise's where they said people shouldn't have kids. I How about this one? You, How about this one? Piano play 77. Do you guys have a single brother you can send to BC Canada? I got back to her. Ha ha. It's sad. The problem is lack of good conservative men who want marriage. I'm a 76er. 80s were the best. And then uh, our Patrick says you played professional basketball yeah. in Philadelphia. That's um, what I thought first. She's like, I'm a 76 year. She was born in 76, which makes her a year younger than me. So an 80s kid. Dude, she, BC is the Pacific Northwest, along with Seattle, Portland, and Eugene, where I lived. 
she's in a tough spot. She wants a conservative man. It's you got to get out of that city. It's nearly impossible to find a submissive wife in Western society, though. Do you make sandwiches correctly on your first attempt? Dang. He's just throwing that in there like that. Do you make sandwiches correctly on the first attempt? Ellie Wise is no, coming this is in under hot, us. Dude. This is under dress. Oh, I wonder underdress. if under dress. Um, maybe we should have him on to talk about the correct way to make a sandwich. Or does he not know? He knows. He can govern it. He can govern. I'm not gonna listen. This podcast has gotten pretty hot. I'm not gonna get into um. So you're not sending your brother of wives. But you're not sending your brother up. What? You're not sending your brother up to BC. I don't have an older brother. She wants younger. an older brother, not oh, a younger. I have a younger brother. I got. She it. wants an old. She doesn't want a younger man than her. Yeah. What right? makes them think that we're conservative? Who knows? I don't know where you got that. Yeah, where was that the January six, January six comment or what? <laughs> that's funny. Um, that's funny. What else you got? Uh, I, I like this guy. User wx something or other. Hey, you got. Hey, could you millionaires? I guess we're millionaires. Us? Yeah. Hey, could you millionaires buy a better camera? You guys always look blurred out. Bro, I saw that. See, here's the thing. One, I wanted to talk to you about that because I think it's a four. It's a HD camera. This is a 4K yeah, but Logitech I Brio. To the to his point, I don't think it is because I look pretty non. I don't even want to bring this up. I look. I don't look like I have bad wrinkles in this, but I have bad wrinkles. Like I'm an old. I'm 48. There's settings on this thing, but you have the wrinkle free setting. No, I don't oh. think so. Cause I, I, I don't know. I look, I, I you always look, look haggard. I know. Well, bro, no, I'm just kidding. I'm getting older. I'm just kidding. I look haggard. My kids talk about it. They say that to you. They you don't know, say haggard. They don't know what that means. But you know what your problem that is? my, my daughter is like, you need to do a facial like thing. And I'm like, I know. How do I do it? You know, you know what it's from, right? Be son. It's from the dog training. It's from being out it's in the sun all the time. It's from sun. It's from I mean, the these sun. these wrinkles. My dad had these. My dad had these bad. My, whatever those are called. Crow's feet. feet. Yeah. My yeah. my wife. My, yeah. She used to she used to like bake in the sun. You have them, but not like me. Not like you. But like uh, when it, she would like bake in the sun, and when I would, I don't I haven't sunbathed obviously in a very long time. But when I did, or even if I will, like if I'm in Hawaii or something, I always like. Uh, sunbathe i'll take my shirt off and i'll put it oh, over my face the ladies love it i don't care what the ladies like i'm married but like i throw it on my yeah. face because i don't want my face to get cooked because yeah. like it does a ton of damage and then i used to tell my wife like hey don't d like cover your face don't like let your face get really um a lot yeah, of sun that's true and then eventually she's like oh this is causing like damage to my face and then she's like now she will never have like she puts a mm. she wore a hat and she'll put stuff Sunscreen. on her face because mm. now she's more concerned with that yep you know yep but, but you know what are you can do i don't wear sunscreen i've never worn sunscreen i've worn it like 10 times in my life really yeah i don't i just don't wear it uh i wear it like when i'll go on I hikes know. a lot stuff, of people I put it on my neck and on my ears that seems to be the the places i get like really burnt on the podcast i look red but like i have pretty dark skin yeah like i'll get really tan yeah probably because i don't wear sunscreen <laughs> to be fair and i'm to in the you, sun a lot your your skin color is way different than it is here. Like it looks very orange here and it looks say. brown here. It's like normal. Um, okay, so the answer, um, millionaires, uh, thank you for the compliment. And uh, can, or no, could you buy a better camera? Uh, I could, yes. The answer to that is yes, I could buy a better camera. Will I buy a better camera? No, I will not. Yeah, but it's fine. Um, if I got anything, I'd get one of those like Sony, those like real nice ones, but mm. they have like cool depth of field. But like, this is a podcast. Half of it's listened by people that are, you know, listening yeah. to the audio side of it. You got a comment or you want me to do another one? I'll just read one that had 10 likes. I just like the ones that have likes, I'll read. Laughs or ones I like. Laugh so hard in the first quarter of this episode. And by the way, I'm not reading this because they, if they compliment us, I'm reading it because you guys like it. Side note. My Irish wolfhound is a very special needs guy, and he is worth every second of sacrifice and money spent on him. I don't hmm. know. They liked that one. Uh, how about this? Zobi? Oh, Here's one that has a lot of likes. Go ahead. Zobi says, I love how this turned from a dog training podcast to a two friends ran about everything podcast. Ha, yeah. ha, ha. We'll continue tuning in. Maybe next week they'll talk about aliens. And then Christine says, don't give them any ideas. And oh, then someone said aliens and Bigfoot. 
And then our Patrick said, and this is why most of us love it. That's funny, huh? Yeah. This well, is a we... good one. Lisa Leon says, I laughed hysterically when you told the story of the annoyed viewer saying it's cold walking the dog. Here in New England, it's bitter cold, snowing and flooding. Dogs are not getting walked. Laugh out loud. Mm. What do you think about that? As a Californian, you're just like, you're like, what? It's snowing outside? I know. It's weird. You're so divorced from this whole winter thing. So divorced from it. It's what? January something-ish? Mid, Mid-January. We'll My mom it. lives in Eugene, Oregon. She sent pictures of just everything's ice. Like no one's leaving their house. It's just iced over everywhere. There's something to that though. The family stays in the house. They talk a lot. I think, whereas we're a very active family mm -hmm. and that's good. I think I know, but, um, there's something to be said for the other way too. I know people are going to keep thinking that we're Not just that say, I don't talk to my family, but you say like, Oh, I love your, I love your podcast. But like there are a bunch of them that say this. So this one says just Don DB says, I love listening to your guys' podcast. This podcast reminded me that there are so many variables within life. I'm glad nobody's getting into my business. You, and then laugh out loud. Uh, you would, get so much flack from the general population if they heard you are going to let your cats out um outside really? and it says fyi daddy it's and junior true. have passed on yeah so maybe prince is number one so this she's talking obviously you know what she's talking about thanks for the stimulating conversations by the way i learn a lot by reading the comments i don't know if that's considered trolling by others i'm curious and i i did notice that you would like that comment yeah i mean i i just maybe it's my own ego but i sometimes think is prince actually the most famous dog in the world if you went by TV, I don't think there's a, t there's not like a Frasier dog that's big or Lassie dog that's big or the, the target Spud McKenzie, Spud McKenzie or something there. They, I don't think they're, they exist right Spud's now. Spud's been out of the game for a little while. Yeah. So then, so then you go to YouTube, I guess, right. Or, or Instagram or TikTok. So you've got Jason Corey's dogs, Bruce Wayne. Jason Corey has a lot of followers on YouTube and it's very dog about his dogs. So they made them. Maybe Garrett Wing has a dog. I don't know that dog's name. I don't know if everyone knows that dog's Thor or name. something, isn't it? So I mean, so he's got a lot of follow. Like I, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to say. But I think the ultimate thing is that um, they love the podcast. So but I isn't do. It, you don't find that interesting about Prince being the most famous dog in the world? I think he's up there, but yeah. I don't know. I wonder I mean, if he. I just want to know if he is because I think it's it, you I, could. I would say, it could be figured out. How about this? It's a metric. I would say. I would say most, it's a views or say a most fame admired. recognition most admired oh you think maybe i'd rather be most admired than most known yeah yeah um, most known i think lassie's known more than him the one right below well that's like living well, of versus course. not living yeah, but of course uh, i would say um right below that comment this person said delilah delaney said your podcast is my favorite especially when you go off the, do the topic of dogs nice to hear adult conversations that aren't sanitized oh well she's gonna love you're, this you're, you're in luck <laughs> What you want to hear about vasectomies, middle-aged men and vasectomies? Well, you, we hit the nail on the head with this podcast. Yeah, that's pretty funny, huh? Yeah, yeah, but I, it. yeah, do what you do. I, everyone can have one for all I care. The vasectomy. I'm just doing what, what I want to do. Yeah, you do. You do you. Um, life. how about this one, Rev Nine Fan? I don't know. It is. It's 100% true about dogs living longer back then. If you think about the ingredients of food and the crap they, they fed dogs through the years, back in the day, they gave dogs table scraps before dog food was available. What were the table scraps? It was food that was organic and healthy, which is way better than the food For humans sure. eat today. These or that's also why there is a decline in human health these days. What do you think of that? Yeah, yeah, totally true. It's pretty table scraps. It's not giving them enchiladas. You're giving them steak and potatoes possibly and... I've actually, I know this is a, chicken, not a human health podcast, but if you, you could cut it both ways with dogs and humans that what's that guy's name? Peter Atia. You ever see him on? He's like a longevity I guy. Have. He's not bad. I think he's based out of San Diego. I could, oh. I could be wrong, but one of the things he was saying, and I want to get your, I, I hate, I apologize for talking about dogs, but let me do it for Go a ahead. second. So one of his things that he was saying is like from like metabolic health and just overall general wellness, he was saying that the most important, th like one of the most important things is not being overfed and to basically to, um, if you put anyone on a calorie deficit essentially and you get they them, thrive. yeah, they like their, their markers go up almost like, mm. um, like across the board 
And so they're just healthier. And it, obviously more if you're like you're overfed or you're fat or you're yeah, overweight yeah, or whatever yeah. you want to call it. But um, I know uh, my father-in-law, he has Mia. And I think for a while, a dog. yeah, I think she is doing way better. And I think he was heavy on the old carny burritos and like just throwing her whatever was around, which is yeah. not great food now, like to this person's point. Yeah. But also he'd give her burritos just i think every whatever he's eating i think oh, he was wow. just like you know people love to just be like oh i'm your best friend here yeah but i've never given like a burrito why not are you selfish no just like it just seems like there's stuff in i mean just i guess the tea is not bad yeah the, the meat's good there's just like sauces and stuff yeah. i don't know but i mean what do you think so the question is what do you think about that and what do you think about um you know what i mean like what do you think about dogs being overfed in general and then like um have you seen that? Like, do you have a lot of people that come to your facility seem to be like, yeah, like, wow, that dog's overweight. The commoners care way more than me. They care about the overweight dogs. Oh, you mean well, like when I they come to your session? Yeah. And then I do a video and uh, people are like, that dog's overweight. Blah, blah, blah. They get all mad about it. It's like my kids. My kids are like, oh, that person's overweight. Like, I don't know. I don't care you about don't care. society's overweight problem. You don't care? No. And uh, the dogs. I've said you, you dog needs to go on a diet. I've said that, but like, it just, I, 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 it's like behavior. Like maybe my, uh, my whole mind is just on behavior and like, I don't have the brain space, but that's not true. Cause I, I'll talk to them about like CBD for their dog and like all these other things. So I go other places. I don't know why I don't care that much I about mean, overweight dogs. Um, I just don't care that much. Do you, but because do you, maybe I know how hard it is. A dog's like hungry all the time. And you're like, here's your cup of food. And the dog's just hungry all the time. Doesn't that seem like a form of, of unhealthiness and the dog like needing something because you putting a dog in a diet is kind of a crazy thing. Kind of stressful. They're hungry all the time. I don't know if they would, you be, need though. to lose weight. It depends on what but you, you feed need them. to be starving all the time. It's like a They're meat always diet. hungry though. It's Even like a meat you, diet. you give I, these meat diets, they still they stay hungry. We, a dog losing weight is a hungry dog. Yeah, but I don't know. I think you time. can do you like, can do better food. I've still, done a lot of different like food diet programs, and if you do as a human, right, right, if which you is do similar. like say chicken, if you eat like chicken breasts, you'll lose you start, weight. If you start eating, that's a good point. chicken potatoes like a lot of right, like, right, right. vegetables if you you're, start eating this you're gonna be full you're gonna, gonna be gonna so lose full like you, like it'll be a, a, a chore all right it's like it's when you start eating highly palatable foods that yeah. become difficult and yeah. so also too if That's you think true. about it let's just say uh and i'm looking at the kona boy uh picture here with all the wild food that that's on the plate for them. Head. If yeah, if you think about a dog eating nothing but meat and, and we saw this based on the documentary, um, pet fooled or whatever, but if it is eating a diet, like purely of just meat, then I think yeah, it's going to be satisfied and it's going to stop right. eating or it's going to eat when it's done eating. Whereas like, I think you're right. It's like carbs. It's like, what is my level with, um, with those crumble cookies? Shout out, uh, crumble crumble cookie. If you guys want to do an endorsement deal, um, I have no off switch with the, with those crumble cookies. You've seen me with these I know. things like they're 800 calories each. I know. Right. Like there's no level. I don't eat four and I'm like, okay, that's enough. I'm yeah. Like, Give me more. I think I've been late to the game, the raw food diet uh, deal. I'm, I'm late. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely late to the game. Like I saw Jason Corey. He's like, I've been feeding my dog raw for seven years on some video. And it's like, not me. I'm late. What about dog daddy? Dog daddy apparently. Oh yeah, is feeding, I saw a video of him is too. Feeding uh, his dogs like brisket. Yeah, he's like they will eat nothing but filet mignon. Yeah, so I'm late to this to the game. I I love that. I love that. I I don't know how, if he's being funny. I like, didn't, I, I didn't I, see the video. I, I just really. Saw I saw it on I saw it on Instagram, but I don't know if he's being funny or not. Um, or if he's like doing trolling, or if he's legit. But he's showing like feeding his video. Like he's getting like the greatest cuts of meat. And then he he's like chopping them all up and he's like dropping them into the like seven dog bowls because he has all those dogs. Yeah. And then he's putting all this different stuff in. And I'm like, that's that's two hundred dollars worth of food oh, yeah. for one session. But I'm like, maybe he's being funny. But I guess the point is it's still yeah. a cool video and we love we love that. But it's it's just yeah. funny, you know. So yeah. Uh let me send you off with one more and then we'll we'll come we'll up be done. I, know we got, I got 90 seconds. Um Lucy Goosey 819 says, I'm pretty risk averse or risk savvy, I thought, 
was in mm -hmm. Africa once and left very secure accommodations for a three day trip. I calculated risks during the, the trip. We took a hike and at one point the grass was head high, shoulder high. Uh, we couldn't see anything around us. Next minute, five locals crossed our path with a rifle and a dead gazelle uh, tied to a tree branch that they were carrying between them. That's cool. Then the sickening realization dawned that there were people with rifles around us hunting for animals who have the same color hair as me. Uh, my parents later told me that they were beside themselves with worry the whole three days. Um, they've also been to Africa. I knew they weren't thrilled, but also had no idea how distraught they were. I promised to never do that again, but it's kind of interesting, right? Cause she's talking about all of the way that you try to avoid danger. Yes. You know? And, um, but that's a real thing. There's, there's a reason people hunters wear that bright orange. It's not, people always go, the animals see you. It's like, you don't want to get shot by another hunter is yeah. the reason that you're wearing orange. Well, that it's an interesting thing. Cause like we've gone, we go to Mexico, right. Mm -hmm. And you go to TJ Tijuana, which is not the safest place. In the Maybe world. not. Uh, or you could go south of there, which I've been recently. And they're, they're the police are dr driving around trucks with giant yeah. guns in the back, yeah. ready BMGs, for yeah. a cartel war to pop off at any moment. And you're just cruising around. Like, don't worry. Nothing to, Nothing to but see here. Nothing to see But then you then you go listen. Watch watch videos of uh, San Francisco or L.A. or New York. Princey, dangerous. Say goodbye. Dangerous Say goodbye to stuff. everybody. Princey. Princey. Oh, there he, there he is. There he is. He's An appearance. There he is. All right, you good to go? Yeah. All right, that was a good one. All right, next week. That was a good one. Love you. Can't wait to be shadow banned. See you guys. Yeah.